Welcome back to that Leslie Sound Series. We have some new pedals for you. Leslie Sound is being brought to you by the Pulse from Donner Prince, and the beard is going to tell you a little bit more about it. Yeah, I and mean, this is our first experience with Donner Prince, all the way from Croatia. And uh, this is the first experience. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Hope there's more. Right, we want to see more. Um, I know they have a great tremolo pedal. I know they have a uh, great like take back ish pedal out there mm-hmm. called the Boner that uh, has been getting a lot of. Again, we didn't get the, the giveaway, but we got to see it. It's a cool looking pedal. It is. So the Donner Prince Pulse comes in a lovely little box. Like a um, cigar band kind of look. But what I really like is here on the side, it says musical machinery. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Uh, it came with a pick, right? Yeah, machinery. actually, uh, a cross between uh, probably the uh, Dunlop XLs that you use and the Jazz 3s or the Eric Johnson's when you're somewhere like in the middle. Played it the other day, picked it up. I really like it. Sorry, Dunlop. <laughs> I got V picks that are very different than these, but this is actually a cool pick. It was a, a useful swag. Useful swag. Ooh, hashtag useful swag. <laughs> yes. So the Donner Prince Pulse. Uh, Pulse from the Pulse Tour from Pink Floyd, named after that. Uh, David Gilmour has a long history of using Leslie's, Leslie, Pe- Leslie, Le- not Leslie pedals, Leslie's, mm-hmm. um, throughout that Leslie sound series that we did, we talked about pedals that were modeled after the 122 or very, the Leslie 18, Leslie 16, various other Leslie cabinets. Um, and this pedal is super interesting to us because it's the first one that's not modeled after any of that it's not modeled after like the 16 or the 18 or the 122 or the 147 or the whatever they are whatever they i can't remember all the different models we looked at this is modeled after something totally different so it's modeled after the gibson maestro rovers which are kind of like this drum that sat on a pole with a six inch speaker in it that gilmore was using to record with and then when they did the pulse tour he had people make what he calls the the dipala, dipala potato, potato Ta- something, <laughs> uh, which had two tubes, two six inch speakers, I think hundred watt speakers, spun. They were kind of open air. They mic'd them. They weren't in a cabinet. I don't think. Uh, if you want to know more about that, yes, go to see Bjorn over at Gilmerish um, He will take you through the entire David Gilmore rig and all the stuff that's out there to help you get that sound. And just what a great source. And I've been using that website. For years, mm-hmm. and I, he's done some stuff with a pulse and stuff like that too. So, go check that out. Let's get into the pedal. In the opening clip, it was played in stereo. We're gonna play it in mono now. I think one of the beautiful things about this pedal is it sounds really, really good mm-hmm. in mono. In fact, I think where we start, I don't know where you have it set right now, but if I just hit on and you play two chords, yes, uh, through the uh, Hampton Super. Well, do you want to do the reference tone first? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hamper and Supto, PT, JT22. Yep. So, yeah. So, so, again, not a Floyd cover band, but this will be recognizable. I mean, it is. Yeah. 
Like, I wasn't even trying to play Floyd Sign. I hit an e, e minor chord in A, and I was like, oh, my gosh. That's like so yeah. David Oops. Gilmore. Um, and that's that's it. That's all we're doing. Right. That's all we're we, doing for Floyd. Yes. Uh, uh, mostly for a lack of knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be honest. Let's jump into the pedal, because I think... Even though it is kind of to get that go more sound, I yeah. think it's a really usable pedal for anybody mm-hmm. in any sound that you want to get. Uh, if you want to use a rotary speaker, I think it's unique. Um, so we'll jump into that. Typically what we do is look through the knobs and go over the features. Uh, I'll tell you right away, you have an in, that's a stereo in with a TRS cable. There's a jumper down, jumper down there if you want to do stereo ins. You have two outputs for uh, stereo out. You have an expression pedal jack, which we'll talk about later. And then on off and then fast and slow. You know, you have the LED for on and off. You have the LED to show you if you're fast or show you if you're slow. And so let's start on slow. We'll turn the slow all the way down. I'm going to, yeah, we're, we're probably good with that. Um, run the slow from all the way down to all the way up first. Okay. If memory serves, all the way down is two revolutions per second or something. All the way up on slow is four. And then when we switch this to fast now and turn fast all the way down, it's the, it should be exactly where we left off. In fact, what we'll do, yeah. we'll start it on slow and switch to fast, but I don't think you'll hear a difference. Mm-hmm. And we've talked in the, in the series before, some pedals overlap, some pedals meet, and some pedals have like a gap. Mm-hmm. This one meets. So the next knob that you have on the pulse is the distance knob, and this is pretty interesting. Uh, You see this a lot in Leslie pedals is trying to emulate where the mic placement Mm -hmm. is. So distance, if we move it all the way to the left, we are far away from the speakers. And then as we turn distance to the right, it's like bringing the microphones closer to the speakers. If you're not familiar with that, if you have a speaker that's spinning around, the closer you are, you're going to get more of a pulse Mm -hmm. from the speaker because you're going to mic the dead air. As you go away, the sound has time to spread out, so you're going to get more of a smooth sound. Yep. All right. So putting that mic right on one of those tubes. Mm-hmm. That's cool. Mm-hmm. The We're going to skip the inertia for now, jump straight to mix. Mix all the way to the left is 100% dry. Uh, at noon is 50-50, and all the way to the right is 100% wet. And so we'll just we'll pull the distance back a little bit um, and just run that knob real quick.
I think there, there's two good ways to look at this now. First of all, David Gilmore. David. Dave. Long, yeah. His friend's time. calling Dave. Right. Long time friends. <laughs> Sir David. <laughs> Sir David Gilmore. <laughs> um, I think runs those Dupala, Dapala, tomato, whatever. <laughs> runs those speakers more than maybe you think he does. Um, but tends to run them kind of low in the mix and stuff just to add some movement. Mm -hmm. um, even running them with other effects like his phasers or flangers or whatever, I think a lot of times they're still in the background on. Um, never, I think, runs them by themselves. It's not like he turns the high watts off and goes just to the <laughs> right, right. just to the rotating speaker cabinets. Um, and if you go to other players like Steve Ray Vaughan or somebody that used Leslie speakers on stage, they often had those in addition not often, I think. I mean, it's Almost like always, always kind of a wet, dry situation, more or less. The, the clean amp, or maybe it was overdriven, but no, non affected amp. And then the right, especially like some of the Leslie 18s and mm -hmm. stuff, or 16s that became part of the amp where they like had a crossover and right. put some of the signal in this amp and some in the Leslie. Um, with the with the, maybe the notable exception, I don't know if we've ever talked about this in the series, and that would be the perfect time. Yes, <laughs> um, the notable exception, maybe. One story I read on the first recording of a Leslie speaker with a guitar. Could be totally wrong on this. Buddy Guy. Hmm. They were doing a session and his amp blew up and they plugged him into a Leslie. So that might be the notable. It was a session, I think, with Junior Wells. Okay. Uh, maybe the Hoodoo Man Blues CD. His amp blew up, so they plugged him into a Leslie. That might be the first recording of a Leslie with a guitar. And then Spots grew on his guitar. Yeah. <laughs> Spots grew on his guitar, up his straps, it's strap put on it was a whole thing. overall, so it was a mess. Um... <laughs> Okay, so one thing that we have not done is the inertia knob. Right. So the inertia, uh, a lot of times in Leslie pedals, you'll see ramp. Ramp. Um, I believe all the way to the right is really long. Yeah, I think I was just looking to see where we have the speed set right to get a pretty good difference. Right? Do you want? Yeah. That's so high. Good. We're gonna do real high and real low. Yeah, and then. So this is the ramp speed. So how fast, once I hit this button, it's on fast now. Once I hit that button, how long will it take for it to slow completely down and then speed back up again when I hit it again? And so we're all the way to the, to the left. To the right. To the right. To the right. Yeah, that's one thing I didn't really have experience with Leslie Pedals until we started doing this show and this series. And that is a very um, dynamic setting that you can have on a Leslie mm -hmm. that can add dr dramatic effect to a song, a moment in a song, uh, the end of a song, mm -hmm. maybe going into a bridge, mm -hmm. build up, a tear down. And you know I, yeah. I love that. I mean, this yeah. is, to me, the thing that makes this effect... One of the most useful. Mm -hmm. uh, being able to control that, getting that sweet spot. I, I feel like once you get that sweet spot and you know that sweet spot, you know when to hit it. Like if you're doing a build up to a chorus or right. something that you can hit it where that speed up happens right there at the end. Mm -hmm. So it's at the high speed at the top of the chorus or at the low speed when you come out or whatever. It really can add a dramatic mm -hmm. moment to. And it's, it sounds fantastic. <laughs> I love it. I don't I can't say enough about that. All right, so what do we have? We did all the knobs, right? Yep. Now we got to get for the the jacks. Right. So we got to talk about expression pedal. I will say, I think it's worth mentioning over on this side where we have our stereo outs. There's also two volume trim pots. Mm -hmm. 
Um, one for the left side, one for the right side. So if you're running stereo out, maybe to two different amps, you can kind of adjust those. And mono, I think I read in the directions, you probably want to keep them the same where they're probably just leave them where they're set. Yeah. I mean, Donner Prince, they, they set, they set, they hooked you up. They did. Don't mess it up. Don't mess it up. David Gilmore came and turned the pots with a little uh, eyeglass <laughs> screwdriver. So you don't want to. But if you were running stereo or something, you wanted to tweak that a little bit, you could tweak that mm-hmm. a little bit. Maybe push one a little harder than the other, depending on how you have your amp set up. All right. So the last thing I think we ought to talk about is this expression jack, because there's a, a couple things you can do. Mm-hmm. First thing you could do is just use you know, some kind of switch. Uh, and they tell you in the in the manual, read the manual, which which kind you have. But we have a JHS Red Remote here. It works great. If we plug that in, that now bypasses this switch. That right. switch is out, and we can go fast and slow. So Pat plays. Maybe not the best use, but it would work if you had this buried somewhere on your board reason with a loop right. switcher and you needed to have a switch up front. Uh, we'd kind of have to rely on hearing because you notice this light did not change when right. we did that. And my guess is if you're doing this, you probably couldn't see the light anyway. Right. That's a true story. But another thing that you could do to maybe combat that a little bit, we did an episode not too long ago on this. This is... The control knob by EHX, which basically is two expression pedals that you can set and forget and then switch between the two. So if I plug that in, and you know what? We need power. We didn't we didn't plan that part out very well. But it's right there. But it's right here. So we need power. So I would set this to the slow speed, set this knob to where I want it, you know. And actually, I, for this one, I'm going to turn it all the way off, go to the fat, and turn expression one all the way to low. Same over here, go to the fast, turn it all the way up, turn expression two all the way up. And so now, when we do this... <laughs> I'm going to have to unplug it. Yep. <laughs> High quality. All right. All right. <laughs> So, what a great tool for this pedal mm-hmm. that you literally can set either one wherever you want them. You get to see the little light. All right. These are really inexpensive. Mm-hmm. Um, just a good little piece of kit. What is that? Good little, it's a good little piece of kit. Last but not least. Your more traditional expression approach. Pedal. Right. Go for a full out expression pedal. So, right now we're using the... Moog, the Moog EP2. Uh, we have in tow, this is all the way up in the, heel, in the heel position. We have this all the way down. So this should allow us to go between fast and slow.
So interestingly, when we were playing with the expression pedal, Mm -hmm. one thing I thought about is this like the right, the fast knob and the slow knob. It's not. Okay. So with this then becomes both knobs become the whole range from all the way slow to all the way fast. Right. So you have anywhere from two revolutions to eight revolutions, I think is what it is, right? Because I think slow is two to four and fast is four to eight revolutions per second. You have from two to eight on both knobs. So you can set it really slow or you can set it fast and somewhere in the middle. Mm -hmm. Um, But I figured as we were doing that, I was like, somebody might ask about it because you're not (laughs) jumping between the two, the fast and slow knob. You're jumping between two full range Mm -hmm. expression. That's right. Because this really, this knob is an expression pedal. Right. And then this knob right. is an expression right. pedal. So it's like hooking up two different expression mm-hmm. pedals and putting them in a static spot. All right. Um, not that you needed maybe to know that. <laughs> All right. So I think that's it. Yeah. It's a great pedal. Yeah. I mean. I didn't say it yet, but whenever we were doing that Leslie sound, I tend to like the fast, right? But when we get a slow that sounded good, I'd be like, oh, I think David Gilmore just showed up. Mm-hmm. The slow on this, David Gilmore did did show up <laughs> right it, it is that whole phasey swirly just perfectly tuned it, the, the, the slow is fantastic not that i dislike the fast on this but the slow on this one really captures that they knocked it out of the park yeah i mean when you and i sometimes we wonder how it's going to come across on video <laughs> and we, we we purposely said let's just look at it as a leslie pedal as a as a rotary speaker pedal let's not Try and sit down and cop a bunch of David Gilmer right. rights. People have done that with this pedal. It's out there. Right. I don't know how it sounds on the tape, but I'm telling you, in the room, mm-hmm. you hit an E minor chord and all that and slow, and you're look in mono even. Right. In mo- I mean, it's right. It's huge. Yeah. It's beautiful. Um. We haven't ranked pedals at all. <laughs> we do plan on doing right. an episode on kind of on our favorite Leslies right. soon. This will be in the episode. Yeah. This will be, mm-hmm. without a doubt, um, I don't think this one's going anywhere. <laughs> There's just something about it. I think the uniqueness of the the rotary sound that it's emulating. Forget Dave. I mean, forget David Gilmore. I'm sure. I love Pink Floyd. Been a huge Pink Floyd fan all my life. David mm-hmm. Gilmore, one of my favorite guitarists. All that, but forget that for a minute. Like, I, I, I really like it. Right. The only the only discussion about where it's going to go is whose board will it wind up on. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but maybe we won't fight over the, some of the other pedals as much. Right, we'll have to compromise. We'll have to compromise. Trade you that for a Hampstead. Right. <laughs> um. So with that, I think. I mean. Yeah. I think it's it. Uh. Thank, big thanks to Donner Prince. If you haven't looked at Donner Prince yet, we'll put a link down in the description. Make sure you go out, check out what they're doing. Their stuff is looks really cool, and hopefully in the future maybe we can see some more of it because. Mm-hmm. Love it. So with that, thanks for, we always like to take a second, thank everybody that's watching, hitting subscribe, hitting the notification, hitting like buttons. Those actions help us bring more cool gear on the show, help us make this happen. And so we appreciate that and appreciate you for doing that. And I think with that. I'm PJ on behalf of The Beard, reminding you no matter what you hear, you never have too much gear. You need some drive. That's what we do. I think we need to invite Mr. Barber to the party. (laughs) 